In this video, we're going to learn how to convert a system from 2D into 3D. Most of my videos are made in 2D in order to keep things simple and easy to understand, but they are not limited to just 2D. So here we're going to see how we can take any of those and convert them to work in 3D. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. This video's Patreon sponsor is Bad Adventure. Bad Adventure is a game development duo currently working on their first game, Wayfarer's Edge. It's a RPG focused on exploring and settling unknown frontier lands in a low fantasy and wild west theme. Check them out at badadventure.com. Okay, so as I said, in most of my videos I tend to work in 2D, however very few of them are actually limited to 2D only. With a few tiny changes, almost all of those systems can work just the same in 3D. That's exactly what I did when I made the Wash Your Hands video game. The game is built in 3D, but it uses a lot of systems that were previously made in 2D. So here we're going to look at a scene that we made in a previous video in 2D, and we're going to convert all of the underlying systems to make it work in 3D. So this is the grid combat system made in a previous video. And here it is, everything working in 2D. And everything is functional, so I have my character, I can move it on turn by turn basis and attack an enemy. Yep, there it is. And we're going to convert that into this version. Functionally, it's exactly the same, but as you can see, everything is built in 3D. So here's my character, I can still move him, I can still attack, and yep, there you go, everything works. So we're going to convert the underlying grid system. Then we're also going to convert the Talma. The mouse, as you can see, is also positioned in 3D. The damage pop-ups and the health bar are also in 3D, as well as the Sin Machine virtual camera and the characters, which are always in 3D. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our starting scene. So what we have here is what we ended up with in the grid combat system video. So everything is in flat 2D with basic turn-based logic. So everything works, and now we want to convert all this into 3D. Let's start off with the simplest and most obvious, which is the camera. So here we are using a 2D Sin Machine virtual camera. So here it is, our virtual camera. And the way it's doing is it's simply following this empty game object. So as this game object moves, that's how we are handling the camera. So to convert our camera from 2D into 3D, we just select our main camera and in here, inside of orthographic, make it a perspective. And now just set all the fields. All right, so here is our setup. So everything still looks exactly the same, but it's using perspective instead of orthographic. So the camera does not rotate, it simply pans to follow the target. All right, so for converting the camera, this is pretty much all it takes. Here in the editor, we can see that our sprites are still vertical, but our camera is now, yep, nicely in 3D. Now we can start placing our objects in 3D. So first, let's handle the background. Now there are two ways we can do this. We can use a sprite render like we're already using, and we simply rotate it in order to make it flat, or we can use a proper 3D mesh. So in order to make this as 3D focused as possible, let's use the mesh instead. So in here, let's create a new 3D object. Let's make it a simple quad. Okay, here's our quad. Now let's flatten it, so 90 degrees in there. Okay, it's flat. And now one of the main differences between 2D and 3D is in here, we absolutely need a material. So let's make a material for our ground. Make a new material, ground material. Select the background, okay, there's our material. And just apply it to this. So now let's place this on Y of zero, so it's down there, and just scale it. All right, so there it is. We have our ground object with our ground material. It's placed on 0, 0, 0, and it's rotated to be flat pointing upwards. So here in the camera, we can see our ground. Now we can modify our camera movement to move along the X, which is good, but instead of moving on the Y, let's move it on the Z. So here on our main script, we have our Sin Machine file transform, and here we have our handle camera movement where we are moving it, and it's in here, instead of modifying the Y, we modify the Z instead. 
Okay, here we are and move upwards and yep, there you go. Now our camera is moving along the correct axis. Now since we have our camera and our background in 3D, let's add a cool effect, which is the depth of field. So we just make a new volume. And here I already have a simple volume profile. And yep, there's our depth of field effect, so it's lovely blurry up here and here it looks normal. Okay, so far so good. Now it's time to handle our grid system. Now there are two ways we can convert this. We can convert the grid from being XY based and turn it into XZ, or we can keep all of the internals in XY and only modify our inputs and outputs. Both of those approaches are valid. Here, let's go with swapping the XY for XZ. So here, as you can see, our grid is going along on the Y axis and now we want to make it flat. So here in the grid class that we've been using, whenever we are accessing a reference to a vector three, like for example here on a get warm position, we need to swap this from using XY to using XZ. So instead of modifying this class directly, let's make a duplicate. So here is the grid class and just duplicate it and call this the grid XZ. All right, now here, let's fix all the errors and modify it. So here, when we get the warm position, instead of XY, let's put X then zero and we fill in the Z. And we can also rename this to be in Z. And same thing here, rename this function to be get xz. And we have an out on the z. All right, so here I've replaced all dimensions of a Y and replaced it with Z. And on our world position conversion, we also made it to make sure that we return on X, zero, Z. All right, so everything should be working. Now let's use this grid class instead of the previous one. So here in our main script, we are initializing our grid of type grid. Now let's swap it out for grid XZ. All right, so that's it. Everything works pretty much exactly the same. And yep, there it is. Now our grid is correctly placed along the XZ axis. Awesome. All right, so now that that one is working, let's update the tile map. So the tile map is here. It's using this class. So in here, again, replace the grid for our XZ grid. All right, so that's pretty much it in here. Then we just need to modify the visual. So here in the visual, the main thing that we need to change is down here when we are updating it. So we're creating our mesh and positioning of our grid objects and everything should already be working since we modified the get wrong position on the XZ. And the main difference here is just the quad size from one, zero, one. All right, let's see if that works. Okay, so here it is, the tile map working. And if we pause, we can see that, yep, it is lying flat on the ground. In order to make it work, I also had to make an XZ version of this function. And again, here just changing the Y for a Z. So in here is zero Z. And also getting the Euler rotation based on the XZ axis. And again, here it is, everything at work. All right, so we already have quite a lot converted. We have the background, the camera, the grids, and the town map. Next, let's handle the mouse. So here on the grid combat system, we are getting the mouse room position from this function in the utilities. And here is that function. And you can see that what it's doing is pretty much just grabbing the world camera and doing a screen to world point on the screen position, which is based on the input mouse position. So this works perfectly in 2D, but in 3D, you need a different method. So let's test that out in this script. Now the method that we need is essentially based on a raycast. So first we grab our camera and then we call the function screen point to ray. And then we pass in our regular input mouse position. So this returns a ray going from the camera through a screen point. And then we can access our physics to do a simple ray cast using this ray. And 
then we have our raycast hit info then we have the max distance so let's just put a very large number and then finally we have a layer mask which we're going to see in a bit so this whole thing returns true if it hits something if so then we have the mouse position inside the raycast hit dot point so we are using a raycast that will collide with something so back in the editor let's create an empty game object let's add a simple box collider and here let's just stretch it out to occupy the whole area so that that all right now we have a massive collider occupying our whole play area and now for the collision let's put this on a specific layer so let's add a new layer in here let's call it the mouse plane and we set this onto that layer okay so back in here let's expose a field to get our layer So of type layer mask for our layer mask. Back in the editor, here we have our film. Let's select our mouse plane, okay? And now we can use this layer mask in here to make sure it only collides with that. So we have our point. Now let's just add something to visualize it. So here, let's simply create a nice sphere. This is just so we can easily visualize it. So here, let's expose that. And then we take that transform and here we set it on our point. Okay, so we should be able to visually see where our mouse is in the world. Let's test. And yep, here we are and we can indeed see that our mouse position is correctly being calculated. So instead of doing a basic screen to world point, we're doing a raycast and colliding with something that is placed on our floor. So we are correctly calculating our mouse position in 3D space. Awesome. Now finally, let's handle our units. Now, the units are actually pretty straightforward since my animation system is already very much mesh based. So the main difference is the shadow down here. So here on the unit prefab, let's swap the shadow from a sprite render onto a 3D mesh. All right, so the shadow is using a quad. It's rotated facing upwards and using a shadow material. And yep, there it is, all the units have their shadow, okay. Now, one thing here, since the units are still flat, I find that having them pointing straight up looks a bit bad. So they're a bit too squished. So one simple solution here is just add a tiny bit of rotation to make them face the camera a bit more. So like this, this one is looking a bit less squished than this one, which I think looks better. So that's the units taken care of. Now for these objects. Right now they are still placed all the way up here on the Y. So let's put them down there. And now also let's swap the colliders from the 2D into the 3D. And yep, there's our objects now in 3D space. So as we move the camera, yep, we can see that they indeed exist in 3D space. So now we have the same issue that these sprites are still flat. So in order to prevent them from being squished, we can do the same thing that we did with the units. Or another approach we can take to handle flat sprites is to simply make them face towards the camera. So here I have this very simple script, just as a transform look at the main camera. So if we apply this to our visuals, and yep, they are now looking straight at the camera. So this is a bit of a different effect depending on which effect you prefer. All right, so all that remains are the tiny extra elements. So first of all, for the health bar, now in here, it's already using a vertical bar in 3D space, so we don't really need to change anything. If we wanted, we could replace the sprite render with a mesh render, but we probably don't want the health bar to be affected by lights, so leaving it as it is as a sprite render works just fine. Then we have the damage pop-ups, which were made in a previous video. So as I click on him, yep, there you go, damage pop is going up. So let's pause the scene. Okay, here we are, and there's the damage pop-up right there. Again, this element is also pointing upwards already. So really, the only thing that we would change here would be to increase it on the Y, make it spawn a bit higher. And yep, there it is. And now finally, we just have the particles missing. So they are based on the mesh particle system, which I covered in another video. The particle system is mesh based, so it's pretty much the same thing that we did for the tile map. Over here on the mesh particle system class, I've added a simple axis. And then down here when we are updating each quad, just adding a simple condition testing if we have the x, y or the x, z axes and simply using the rotation and the quad size. So pretty much exactly the same as the tile map. And now in here, move and shoot, and yep, it looks pretty good. So the particles are now being flat alongside our XZ axis. Yep, just like that. 
Now, it's not exactly perfect since the particles are currently just on the floor, so as I shoot them, yep, they'll leave right from the floor. So if you wanted, you could improve it by making all of the particle position simulation act in 3D. But just in this case, for this quick simple effect, it works pretty good. So there they are, all the particles lying flat on the floor. Alright, so finally we just have one last thing. So far we've been using the 2D renderer, so we can now swap it out for a proper 3D renderer. So here in the project files I have the universal render pipeline assets that we've been using. And again, it's set up to use a 2D renderer. So let's swap it out for a forward renderer. So in here we create a new, go into rendering, URP, and we make a new forward renderer. And we use this one instead. And now we just need to modify the shaders to use the 3D version. So in here, instead of the 2D shader, go into URP, and this kid will just choose an lit. And yep, here it is, everything working with the 3D render. And now if we want, you can play around with regular 3D lights. So we just create a new point light. And yep, here is our scene now working with 3D lights. All right, so here is our final scene. We made some tiny changes on a bunch of systems and successfully converted them from working in 2D to working now in 3D. So there's the camera working in 3D. It even has a nice depth of field effect. The characters are all positioned around in 3D space. The grid and the tile map are all positioned on the floor. Then the mouse is calculating its position also in 3D space. And functionally, everything still works exactly the same as previously. So all of the logic, as you can see, it's independent from 2D to 3D. So yep, here we have our 3D scene. All right, so I hope this video helped you understand how if you find a tutorial showcasing something in 2D, then chances are with a few minor tweaks, you can make it work in 3D. So when looking to solve a particular problem, don't limit yourself to just one specific perspective. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.